Chapter 9 in Fundamentals, Timby, Recording and Reporting. Learning Objectives Identify seven uses for medical records. List six components generally found in any client's medical record. Differentiate between source oriented and problem oriented records. List at least 10 legally defensible characteristics of written charting. Identify six methods of charting. Explain the purpose and applications associated with the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, which is HIPAA. List four aspects of documentation required in the medical records of all clients cared for in acute settings. Discuss why it is important to use only approved abbreviations when charting. Explain how to convert traditional time to military time. Identify nursing benefits of electronic documentation. List at least five advantages and disadvantages of an electronic medical record. Identify four written forms used to communicate information about clients. List five ways that healthcare providers exchange client information other than by reading the medical record. Nurses must communicate information clearly, concisely, and accurately when speaking and recording information. This chapter describes various written and spoken forms of communication and nursing responsibilities for record keeping and reporting. Medical record. A medical record is a collection of information about a person's health, the care provided by health care providers, and the client's progress. It is also referred to as a health record or a client record. The medical record may consist of various agency approved paper forms or the forms may be stored on the hard drive of a computerized electronic medical record called EMR. Physicians who provide care to Medicare and Medicaid clients have an incentive to use electronic information technology to maintain computerized health records if they wish to qualify for government funds under the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act enacted in 2009. According to the Office of the National Coordinator for Health Information Technology, 97% of acute care hospitals possessed electronic technology certified to meet federal requirements. In 2014, 80% of physicians either planned to adopt or already adopted the electronic health records. Hard copy paper forms are placed in a chart, a binder or folder that promotes the orderly collection, storage, and safekeeping of a person's medical record. The paper forms in the chart are color-coded or separated by tabbed sheets. An electronic health record stored on a computer is accessed by using a password and selecting the desired form from a menu. EHRs can be printed if a hard copy is desired. All personnel involved in a client's health care contribute to all the medical record by charting, recording, and documenting the process of entering information. Common Agency Chart Forms, Table 9-1 on page 118. Fact Sheet provides information such as the client's name, date of birth, address, phone number, religion, and insurer, admitting physician, admitting diagnosis, person to contact in case of emergency, and emergency phone number. Advanced Directive provides instructions about the client's choices for care should he or she be unable to make decisions later. History and Physical Examination contains the physician's review of the client's current and past health problems, results of a body system examination and medical diagnosis, and tentative plan for treatment. Physician's Orders identifies laboratory and diagnostic tests, diet, activity, medications, intravenous fluids, and clinical procedures, instructions for changing addressing, dressing, inserting tubes, and so forth on a day-by-day -day basis. Physician's or Multidisciplinary Progress Notes describes the client's ongoing status and response to the current plan of care and potential modifications in the plan. Nursing Admission Database documents information concerning the client's health patterns and initial physical assessment findings. Nursing or Multidisciplinary Plan of Care identifies clients' problems, goals, and directions for care based on analysis of collected data. Graphic Sheet Displays trends in the client's vital signs, weight, and daily summary of fluid intake and output. Daily nursing assessment and flow sheet 
indicates focused physical assessment findings by individual nurses during each 24-hour period and the routine care that was provided. Nursing Notes provides narrative details of subjective and objective data, nursing actions, response of the client, outcomes of communication with other health care providers or the client's family. Medication Administration Record, also known as the MAR, M-A-R, identifies the drug name, date, time, route, and frequency of drug administration, as well as the name of the nurse who administered each medication. Laboratory and Diagnostic Reports contains the results of tests in a sequential order. Discharge Plan indicates the information, skills, and referral services that the client may need before being released from the agency's care. Teaching Summary identifies content that was taught, evidence of the client's learning, and need for repetition or reinforcement. Uses for medical records. Besides serving as a permanent health record, the collective information about a client provides a means to share information among health care providers, thus ensuring client safety and continuity of care. Occasionally, medical records also are used to investigate quality of care in a health care agency, demonstrate compliance with national accreditation standards, promote reimbursement from insurance companies, facilitate health education and research, and provide evidence during malpractice lawsuits. Permanent account. The client's medical record is a written chronologic account of a person's illness or injury and the care provided from the onset of the problem through discharge or death. The record is filed and maintained for future reference. Previous health records often are requested during subsequent admissions so that the client's health history can be reviewed. Sharing information. Because it's impossible for all health care providers to meet and exchange information on a personal basis at the same time, the medical record becomes central to communication, such as sharing information among personnel. The documentation serves as a way to inform others about the client's status and plan for care. Sharing information prevents duplication of care and helps reduce the chance of error or omission. For example, if a client requests medication for pain, the nurse checks the client's record to determine when the last pain-relieving drug was administered. Accurate and timely documentation prevents medication from being administered too frequently or withheld unnecessarily. Maintaining immunization records is an example of how documentation promotes continuity. The record ins ensures the administration of subsequent immunizations according to an appropriate schedule. Quality Assurance To maintain a high level of care, hospitals and other health care agencies use medical records to promote quality assurance, QA, continuous quality improvement, CQI, or total quality improvement, TQI, an agency's internal process for self-improvement to ensure that the level of care reflects or exceeds established standards. One QA method involves investigating the documentation and a sample of medical records. If the analyzed data indicate less than acceptable compliance with standards of care, the committee recommends corrective measures and reevaluates the outcomes later. Accreditation. The Joint Commission is a private association that has established criteria reflecting high standards for client safety and institutional health care. Representatives of the Joint Commission periodically inspect health care agencies to determine whether they demonstrate evidence of quality care. The documentation in randomly selected medical records is just one component examined during an accreditation visit. To support a healthcare agency's accreditation, nursing documentation should include the following. Initial assessment and reassessments of physical, psychological, social, environmental, and self-care status, education, and discharge planning. Identification of nursing diagnoses or clients' needs. Planned nursing interventions or nursing standards of care for meeting the client's nursing care needs, including the education and training provided to the client, and fall precaution strategies. Nursing care provided and client's response to intervention and outcomes of care, including pain management, discharge planning, activities, and the client's or significant other's ability to manage continu continuing care needs. If documentation is substandard, accreditation may be withheld or withdrawn. Reimbursement. 
The cost of most clients' hospital and home care are billed to third-party payers such as Medicare, Medicaid, and private insurance companies. Auditors, inspectors who examine client records, survey medical records to determine whether the care provided meets the established criteria for reimbursement. Undocumented, incomplete, or inconsistent documentation of care may result in a denial of payment. Education and research. Published references are primary resources for health education. Examining the medical records of clients with specific disorders, however, provides a valuable supplement that enhances learning and future problem solving. Client records also facilitate research. For example, some types of clinical investigations are difficult to conduct because few participants are in a particular locale or test facilities are limited. Consequently, stored, microfilmed, or electronic health records serve as an alternative resource for scientific data. Nevertheless, to protect confidentiality, only authorized persons are allowed access to clients' records. See discussion on protecting health information. Formal permission must be obtained from the client, the health agency's administer, administrator, or other authority whenever a client's record is used for a purpose other than treatment and record keeping. Legal evidence. The medical record is considered a legal document. Therefore, entries in medical records must follow legally defensive criteria, Box 9-1. Portions of the medical record can be subpoenaed as evidence by the defense or prosecuting attorney to prove or disprove allegations of malpractice. It is especially important to document safety precautions taken to protect the client, individuals who are notified about concerns and issues, and outcomes of the communication. Box 9-1. Criteria for legally defensible charting. When making an entry in a client's medical record, the nurse should Ensure that the client's name appears on each page. Never chart for someone else. Use the specified color of ink and ballpoint pen or enter data on a computer. Date and time each entry as it is made. Chart promptly after providing care. Make entries in chronological order. Identify documentation that is out of chronologic sequence with the words late entry. Write or print legibly. Use correct grammar and spelling. Reflect the plan of care. Describe the outcomes of care. Record relevant details. Use only approved abbreviations. Never scribble over entries or use correction fluid to obliterate what has been written. Draw a single line through erroneous, erroneous information so that it remains readable. Add the date, initial, and then document the correct information. Record facts, not subjective interpretations. Quote the client's verbal comments. Write duplicate or recopied on documentation that is not original. Include the date, time, initials, and reason for the duplication. Never imply criticism of another's care. Document the circumstances for notifying a physician, the specific data reported, and the physician's recommendations. Identify specific information provided when teaching a client and the evidence that indicates the client has understood the instructions. Leave no empty spaces between entries and signature. Sign each entry by name and title. Each person who makes entries in the client's medical record is responsible for the information he or she records and can be summoned as a witness to testify concerning what has been documented. Any written documentation that cannot be clearly read or that is vague, scribbled through, whited out, written over, or erased makes for a poor legal defense. Is the following statement true or false? Medical records cannot be shared among healthcare workers. False. Medical records are a means to share information among healthcare workers to ensure client safety and continuity of care. Components of medical records. Client access to records. Historically, clients were not allowed to see their medical records. Since the passing of federal legislation requir requiring client confidentiality in 1996, known as the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, HIPAA, with further revisions in 2001 and 2002, 
Clients now have the right to see their own medical and billing records, request changes to anything they feel is inaccurate, and be informed about who has seen their medical records. Consequently, many institutions have written policies that describe the guidelines by which clients can access their own medical records. Policies range from complete, unrestricted access within 30 days of the client's written re request to arranging access in the presence of the client's physician or hospital administrator. Nurses must follow the established agency policy. Types of client records. Client records in most agencies contain similar information. They generally are organized in one of two ways, either a source-oriented or a problem-oriented format. Source-oriented records. The traditional type of client record is a source-oriented record. These are records organized according to the source of documented information. Components of medical records, the person's health information, care provided by health care practitioners, the client's progress, the plan for care, medication administration record, and laboratory and diagnostic reports. Source-oriented records. The traditional type of client record is source-oriented, records organized according to the source of documented information. This type of record contains separate forms in which physicians, nurses, dietitians, physical therapists, and other healthcare providers make entries about their own specific activities in relation to the client's care. One of the criticisms of source-oriented records is that it is difficult to demonstrate a unified, cooperative approach for resolving the client's problems among caregivers. Frequently, the fragmented documentation gives the impression that each healthcare provider is working independently of the other. Problem-oriented records. A second type of client record is the problem-oriented record. Records organized according to the client's health problems. In contrast to source-oriented records that contain numerous locations for information, problem-oriented records contain four major components. The database, the problem list, the plan of care, and the progress notes. The information is compiled and arranged to emphasize goal-directed care to promote the recording of pertinent information and to facilitate communication among healthcare providers. Is the following statement true or false? Source-oriented records contain separate forms for all entries to make different entries. True, source-oriented records contain separate forms for physicians, nurses, dietitians, and physical therapists to make written entries about their specific activities in relation to the client's care. Methods of charting. Nurses use various styles to record information within the client's record. Examples include narrative charting, soap charting, focus charting, pie charting, charting by exception, and electronic computerized charting. Narrative charting. The style of documentation generally used in source-oriented records involves writing information about the client and client care in chronologic order. There is no established format for narrative notations. The content resembles a log or journal. Narrative charting is time-consuming to write and read. The healthcare provider must sort through the lengthy notation for specific information about care and progress that correlates with the client's problems. Depending on the skill of the person writing a narrative entry, he or she may omit pertinent documentation or include insignificant information. Soap charting. Soap charting, the documentation style more likely to be used in a problem-oriented record, acquired its name from four essential components included in a progress note. S equals subjective data, O equals objective data, A equals analysis of the data, and P equals the plan of care. Some agencies have expanded the SOAP format to SOAPI or SOAPier. I equals interventions, E equals evaluation, and R equals revision to the plan of care. Any variations in the SOAP format tend to focus the documentation on pertinent information that is required by the Joint Commission. SOAP charting also helps demonstrate 
interdisciplinary cooperation because everyone involved in the care of a client makes entries in the same location in the chart. Focus charting. Focus charting is a modified form of SOAP charting and uses the word focus rather than problem because some believe that the word problem carries negative connotations. A focus can be the client's current or changed behavior, significant events in the client's care, or even a North American Nursing Diagnosis Association International Nursing Diagnosis known as NANDA. Instead of using the SOAP format to make entries, focus charting follows a DAR model. D equals data, A equals action, R equals response. DAR notations tend to reflect the steps in the nursing process. Pie charting, a method of recording the client's progress under the headings of problem, intervention, and evaluation, similar to the SOAPI format. The pie style pr prompts the nurse to address specific content in a charted progress note. When nurses use the pie method, they document assessments on a separate form and give the client's problems a corresponding number. They use the numbers subsequently in the progress notes when referring to interventions and the client's responses. Charting by exception. Charting by exception is a documentation method in which nurses chart only abnormal assessment findings or care that deviates from a standard norm. Proponents of this method say that charting by exception is more efficient. It provides quick access to abnormal findings because it does not describe normal and routine information. Electronic charting. Electronic charting is documenting client information via a computer, is a component of informatics. Informatics refers to the collection, storage, retrieval, and sharing of recorded data. Nursing informatics involves a combination of computer skills, knowledge of informatics, and information literacy. Electronic charting is most efficient for nurses when documentation is done at the point of care, called POC, on a bedside computer, or on a computer on wheels, abbreviated COW. Having a terminal at the nursing station is a less desirable option because this removes the nurse from the source of the data. However, this may be the only alternative when there are limited computers for charting available. Centralized terminals generally are connected to large information systems, local area networks, or LANs that link departments in the institution like pharmacy, laboratory, admissions office, accounting. Therefore, they are less specific for nursing use. Although each computer system varies, electronic charting generally is done by using a computer and keyboard or touching the monitor screen with a finger or device, such as a light pen, to select from a list of menu options. Some systems allow a combination of keyboarding and touch screen technology. Data entry by voice activation has also been developed. A single keystroke saves the information displayed on the monitor to the client's record. Computerized electronic charting from a nursing point of view has many advantages. The information is always legible. It automatically records the date and time of the documentation. The abbreviations and terms are consistent with agency approved lists. It eliminates trivia. Omissions are fewer because the computer prompts the nurse to enter specific information. It saves time because it eliminates delays in obtaining a physical chart. It reduces overtime costs for uncompleted end of shift charting. Multiple healthcare providers can use the medical records simultaneously for many different workstations. Documentation formats prompt the nurse to enter data required by the Joint Commission, such as pain and fall assessments. Entries are automatically credited to the user. Legibility and spelling are no longer issues. It reduces medication errors because the system alerts and prompts the physician regarding miscalculations of drug doses, medication interactions, or the client's allergies. It allows obtaining test results quickly so that interventions can be implemented in a more timely manner. It frees nurses from transcribing physicians' orders and making phone calls for the purpose of clarification. Firewalls and passwords prevent breaches in confidentiality by protecting unauthorized access to confidential information. Electronic records are periodically backed up on systems elsewhere than in the agency of origin and are therefore protected from destruction should there be a fire or other type of disaster. There are other nursing benefits from computer applications. Computers are being used to generate nursing care plans, develop staffing patterns that meet the current unit census and client acuity levels, analyze assessment data for monitoring equipment, and reduce medication errors by calling attention to drugs that have been newly ordered or not administered and by alerting the nurse to incompatibilities or contraindications to prescribed drugs.
computerized documentation and EMRs, electronic medical records, have additional advantages for institutions, but there are also disadvantages such as the following. Systems are expensive to purchase. Systems vary with institutions necessitating extensive training of new hires. Competency in using the system requires significant time. Requires information technology, IT support staff. Passwords must be changed regularly. Downtime during system upgrades and power or electronic failures can interrupt and delay documentation and access to the full record. Temporary paper charting must be substituted when the system is down. Fewer narrative entries due to structured options that are limited to multiple lists. Information is scattered among various files. Promotes double charting, repetitious entry of same information. Confidentiality of information may be compromised if computer screens are left unattended, viewed by others at the bedside, accessed by unauthorized users, or printouts are not secured or destroyed at the end of a shift. Pharmacologic considerations. Built-in safeguards are a feature of electronic medication administration records called MARS. Screen pop-ups require the entry of data before the MARS screen can be viewed. This is designed to ensure that vital assessments such as blood pressure, pulse, or blood glucose levels are done before administering select medications, alerting the nurse, and reducing the chance of serious consequences of incorrect medication administration. Which charting method involves writing information about the client and client care in chronological order? Is it SOAP, PI, narrative, or focus? The answer is narrative charting. Narrative charting involves writing information about the client and client care in chronological order. SOAP charting involves documenting client data under four essential components. Focus charting is a modified form of SOAP. Pie charting is a method of recording the client's progress under the heading of problem, intervention, and evaluation. HIPAA, protecting health information. Congress enacted the first HIPAA legislation to protect the rights of US citizens to retain their health insurance when changing employment. To do so, required transmitting health records from one insurance company to another. Transmission of the information resulted in the disclosure of personal health information to non-clinical individuals, a process that, in essence, jeopardized the individual's confidentiality and right to privacy. Subsequently, the original HIPAA legislation was expanded in 2001 and 2002 to enact further measures to protect the privacy of health records and the security of that data. All healthcare agencies have been mandated to comply with the newest HIPAA regulations. Privacy standards. HIPAA regulations require healthcare agencies to safeguard written, spoken, and electronic health information in the following ways. Submit a written notice to all clients identifying the uses and disclosures of their health information, such as to third parties for use in treatment or for payment for services. Obtain the client's signature indicating that he or she has been informed of the disclosure of information and his or her right to learn who has seen the records. The law also indicates that agencies must limit released information from a health record to minimum disclosure or information necessary for the immediate purpose only. In other words, it is inappropriate to release the entire health record when only portions or isolated pieces of information are needed. Healthcare agencies must obtain specific authorization from the client to release information to family or friends, attorneys, and other parties for use such as research, fundraising, and marketing. The client retains the right to withhold health information for any of these. There are some exceptions when health information can be revealed without the client's prior approval. Box 9-2 ident identifies examples of beneficial disclosures, exemptions when agencies can release private health information without the client's proper, excuse me, prior authorization. Box 9-2, exemptions for beneficial disclosures, reporting vital statistics such as births and deaths, informing the U.S. Drug and Food Administration of adverse effects to drugs or medical devices, disclosing information for organ or tissue donation, notifying the public health department about communicable diseases, notifying an identified person of a credible threat for imminent harm.
workplace applications. In an effort to limit casual access to the identity of clients and health information, HIPAA legislation has created several changes that affect the workplace. Some examples of these regulations include the following. The names of clients on charts can no longer be visible to the public. Clipboards must obscure identifiable names of clients and private information. Whiteboards must be free of information linking a client with a diagnosis, procedure, or treatment. Computer screens must be oriented away from public view. Flat screen monitors are more difficult to read at obtuse angles. Conversations regarding clients must take place in private places where they cannot be overheard. This has led to a trend of providing private rooms for all hospitalized clients so that personal information cannot be overheard by someone else sharing the room. Fax machines, filing cabinets, and medical records must be located in areas off limits to the public. A cover sheet and a statement indicating that fax data contains confidential information must accompany electronically transmitted information. Light boxes for examining x-rays or other diagnostic scans on which the client's name appears must be in private areas. Documentation must be kept of people who have accessed a client's record. Review. Conversations regarding clients must occur in private places. Fax machines and medical records must be limited to areas inaccessible to the public. Cover sheet on all faxes, emails warning that confidential information being transmitted, light boxes for x-rays, and scan results must be located in private areas. Documentation must be kept on all with access to client records. Using abbreviations, abbreviations shorten the length of documentation and the time required for this task. Brevity, however, must never take priority over completeness and accuracy. It's better to write at length than to omit information or make vague entries. Many abbreviations have common meanings. However, nurses cannot assume that all abbreviations are interpreted the same universally. Some may have one meaning in one locale or agency, but may mean something different or be unfamiliar in another. To avoid confusion among caregivers and misinterpretation if the chart is subpoenaed, as legal evidence, each agency provides a list of approved abbreviations and their meanings. When documenting, nurses must use only those abbreviations on the agency's approved list. The Joint Commission has identified specific abbreviations that should not be used in order to protect the safety of clients. In addition, the Institute for Safe Medication Practices has added a list of abbreviation symbols and dose designations that should be avoided to prevent medication errors. There may be future deletions of dangerous abbreviations, acronyms, symbols, and dose designations as the Joint Commission monitors and evaluates compliance. Currently, the ban on using unapproved abbreviations does not apply to health IT systems such as electronic medical records, but the Joint Commission recommends that they be eliminated from newly appropriated or upgraded systems. Some common abbreviations are listed in Table 9.4, more can be found in Appendix B. Documentation of time. The nurse identifies the date and time of each entry in the record. This happens automatically with electronic documentation. Some hospitals use traditional time, time based on two 12-hour revolutions on a clock, which is identified with the hour and minute followed by a.m. or p.m. Other agencies prefer military time, time based on a 24-hour clock, which uses a different four-digit number for each hour and minute of the day. The first two digits indicate the hour within the 24-hour period, and the last two digits indicate the minutes. The use of military time avoids confusion because no number is ever duplicated and the labels AM, PM, Midnight, and Noon are not needed. Military time begins at midnight, 2400, or 0000. zero. One minute after midnight is 0001. A zero is placed before the hours of 1 through 9 in the morning. For example, 0700 refers to 7 a.m. and is stated as 0700. After noon, 12 is added to each hour. Therefore, 1 p.m. is 1300. Minutes are given as 1 to 59. See skill 9-1. Is the following statement true or false? 
military time is based on two 12-hour revolutions of the clock. False. Military time is based on the 24-hour clock, while traditional time is based on two 12-hour revolutions. Nursing benefits of electronic documentation. Electronic charting is most efficient for nurses when documentation is done at the point of care, on a bedside computer, or on a computer on wheels. Having a terminal at the nursing station is a less desirable option because this removes the nurse from the source of the data. However, this may be the only alternative when there are limited computers for charting available. Centralized terminals generally are connected to large information system called LANs that link departments in the institution. Therefore, they are less specific for nursing use. Although each computer system varies, electronic charting generally is done by using a computer and keyboard or touching the monitor screen with a finger or device such as a light pen to select from a list of menu options. Some systems allow a combination of keyboarding and touch screen technology. Data entry by voice activation has also been developed. A single keystroke saves the information displayed on the monitor to the client's record. Computerized electronic charting from a nursing point of view has many advantages. The information is always legible. It automatically records the date and time of the documentation. The abbreviations and terms are consistent with agency approved lists. It eliminates trivia. Omissions are fewer because the computer prompts the nurse to enter specific information. It saves time because it eliminates delays in obtaining a physical chart. It reduces overtime costs for uncompleted end of shift charting. Multiple healthcare providers can use the medical record simultaneously for many different workstations. Documentation formats prompt the nurse to enter data required by the Joint Commission, such as pain and fall assessments. Entries are automatically credited to the user. Legibility and spelling are no longer issues. Reduces medication errors because the system alerts and prompts the physician regarding miscalculations of drug doses, medication interactions, or the client's allergies allows obtaining test results quickly so that interventions can be implemented in a more timely manner, frees nurses from transcribing physician's orders and making phone calls for the purpose of clarification. Firewalls and passwords prevent breaches and confidentiality by protecting unauthorized access to confidential information. Electronic records are periodically backed up on systems elsewhere than in the agency of origin and are therefore protected from destru destruction should there be a fire or other type of disaster. Review again, it saves time because it eliminates delays in obtaining a physical chart. It reduces overtime costs. Multiple healthcare providers can use the medical record at the same time. Documentation prompts, formats prompt the nurse to enter data required by the Joint Commission such as pain and fall assessments. Entries are automatically credited to the user. Legibility and spelling are no longer issues. Reduces medication errors because the system alerts and prompts the physician regarding miscalculations of drug doses, medication interactions, or the client's allergies. Allows obtaining test results quickly so that interventions can be implemented in a more timely manner. Frees nurses from transcribing physician's orders and making phone calls for the purpose of clarification. Firewalls and passwords prevent breaches and confidentiality by protecting unauthorized access to confidential information. Electronic records are periodically backed up on systems elsewhere than in the agency of origin and are therefore protected from destruction should there be a fire or other type of disaster. Disadvantages of electronic medical records. The systems are expensive to purchase. The systems vary with institution, necess necessitating extensive training of new hires. Competency and using the system requires significant information technology from an IT staff. Passwords must be changed regularly. Downtime during system upgrades and power or electronic failures can interrupt and delay documentation and access to the full record. Temporary paper charting must be substituted when the system is down. Fewer narrative entries due to structured options that are limited to multiple lists. Information is scattered among various files. Promotes double charting, which is repetitious entry of the same information. Charting guidelines. 
should not be time consuming to read and write. Everyone involved in the care of a client should make entries in the same location in the chart. The nurse should address specific content in charted progress notes. Assessments should be documented on a separate form and give the client's problems a corresponding number for quick access. Abnormal assessment findings or care that deviates from the standard should also be documented separately. Client information should be documented electronically. Information should always be legible. Abbreviations and terms should be consistent with agency approved lists. The date of the documentation should be recorded. The time of the documentation should be recorded as well. Written forms of communication. The nursing card X. The nursing card X is a quick reference for current information about the client and his or her care. The Cardex forms for all clients are centrally located in a folder at the nursing station to allow caregivers to flip from one client's data to another. The Cardex has the following uses. Locates clients by name and room number. Identify each client's physician and medical diagnosis. Serves as a reference for a change of shift report. Serves as a guide for making nursing assignments. Provides a rapid resource for current medical orders on each client specifies the client's code or, or do not resuscitate DNR status, check quickly on a client's diet, alert nursing personnel to a client's scheduled test or test prep, inform staff of a client's current level of activity, identify comfort or assistive measures a client may require, provide a tool for estimating the personnel to client ratio for a nursing unit. The information in the CARDEX changes frequently, several times a day at times. The CARDEX is not part of the permanent record Therefore, nurses can write information in pencil and erase. Nursing care plans. A nursing care plan is a written or printed list of the client's problems, goals, and nursing orders for client care. It, prom it promotes the prevention, reduction, or resolution of health problems. The principles and style for writing a diagnostic statement, goals, and nursing orders are described in Chapter 2. Presently, the Joint Commission standards require that the records show evidence of a plan of care. Many agencies require a separate nursing care plan as a means of demonstrating compliance. Nurses revise the plan of care as the client's condition changes. Most nursing care plans are handwritten on a form that the agency develops. Some agencies use pre-printed pre, pre care plans, computer-generated care plans, standards of care, clinical pathways, or cite the plan of care within progress notes. Because the nursing care plan is part of the permanent record, and thus as a legal document, it is compiled and maintained following documentation, protocols, and principles. All entries and revisions are dated. The written components are clear, concise, and legible. The information is never obliterated. Only approved abbreviations are used, and each addition or revision to the plan is signed. Checklist. A checklist is a form of documentation in which the nurse indicates the performance of routine care with a check mark or initials. It is an alternative to writing a narrative note. Nurses use paper checklists or a designated file on a computer primarily to avoid documenting types of care that are regularly repeated such as bathing and mouth care. This charting technique is especially helpful when the care is similar each day and the client's condition does not differ much for extended periods. Flow sheets. A flow sheet is a form of documentation with sections for recording frequently repeated assessment data. It enables nurses to evaluate trends because similar information is located all on one form. Some flow sheets provide room for recording numbers or brief descriptions. Other forms of communication. Interpersonal communication. In addition to using written resources, such as the medical record, to exchange information, communication also takes place during personal interactions among health providers. Some examples are as follows. Change of shift reports, client assignments, team conferences, rounds, telephone calls. Change of shift report is a discussion between a nursing spokesperson from the shift that is ending and the arriving personnel. 
It includes a summary of each client's condition and current status of care. To maximize the efficiency of change of shift reports, nurses should do the following. Be prompt so the report can start and end on time. Come prepared with a pen and paper or clipboard. Avoid socializing during reporting sessions. Take notes. Clarify unclear information. Ask questions about pertinent information that may have been omitted. Some agencies scan and record the report, which saves time because there are no interruptions or digressions. In addition, nurses can replay portions of the digital recording if information needs to be repeated. A recorded report, however, does not allow direct questions, elaboration, or clarification with the person who recorded the report. Client care assignments. Client care assignments are made at the beginning of each shift. Assignments are posted, discussed with team members, or written on a worksheet. Each assignment identifies the client for whom the staff person is responsible and describes their care. Meals and break times also may be scheduled as well as special tasks such as checking and restocking supplies. Team conferences. Conferences are commonly used to exchange information. Topics generally include client care problems, personnel conflicts, new equipment or treatment methods, and changes in policies or procedures. Team conferences often include the nursing staff, staff from other departments involved in client care, physicians, social workers, personnel from community agencies, and in some cases, clients and their significant others. Usually one person organizes and directs the conference. Responsibilities for certain outcomes that result from the team mm -hmm. conference may be delegated to various staff members who attend the meeting. Client rounds. Rounds or visits to the bedside of clients on an individual basis or as a group are used as a means of learning firsthand about clients. When done as a group, the client is a witness to and often an active participant in the interaction. Observing and conversing in the client's presence provides an opportunity to survey the client's condition and determine the status of equipment used in his or her care. It also tends to boost client confidence and security in their care. Since the passage of HIPAA regulations, however, agencies avoid this type of communication if another client shares the room or if the client has not authorized family members or friends who may be visiting to have access to his or her health information. Telephone. Nurses use the telephone to exchange information when it is difficult for people to get together or when they must communicate information quickly. When using the telephone, the nurse does the following. Answers as promptly as possible, speaks in a normal tone of voice, identifies himself or herself by name, title, and nursing unit, obtains or states the reason for the call, discreetly identifies the client being discussed to avoid being publicly overheard, spells the client's name if there's any chance of confusion, converses in a courteous and business-like manner, repeats information to ensure that it has been heard accurately. And when notifying a physician about a change in client's condition, the nurse documents in the client's record the information reported and the instructions received. In an effort to support the Joint Commission's National Patient Safety Goals regarding the improvement of staff communication and identifying patient safety risk, the SBAR format has been recommended as a model for effective communication. SBAR refers to S, situation, what is the situation you are calling about, B, the background, pertinent background information related to the situation, A, assessment, what is your assessment of the situation, R, recommendation, explain what is needed or wanted. If the nurse believes that the physician has not responded in a safe manner to the information given, he or she notifies the nursing supervisor or the head of the medical department. And you could actually add I to, to um, SBAR, and it would be ISBAR, and I is identify yourself before you start talking. Box 9-4 is change of shift report. Uh, change of shift report includes the following. Name of client, age, and room number, the name of the physician, the medical diagnosis or surgical procedure and date, range in vital signs, abnormal assessment data, characteristics of pain, medication, amount, time last given, and outcome achieved, type of diet and percentage consumed at each meal, special body position and level of activity if applicable, scheduling diagnostic tests, test results including those performed by the nurse such as blood glucose levels, changes in medical orders including newly prescribed drugs, intake and output totals, type and rate of infusing intravenous fluid, amount of intravenous fluid that remains, settings on electronic equipment such as amount of suction, 
condition of incision and dressings of applicable color and amount of wound or suction drainage. Is the following statement true or false? A nursing cardex is a documentation with sections for recording frequently repeated assessment data. This is false. A nursing cardex is a quick reference for current information about client and client care. And this is the end of the slideshow.